OK, so we've now entered the data, produced a graph for a, an experiment looking at the um, dose response of a, of a drug um, to a, a cell or whatever, a tissue, an organ. And then we've applied an inhibitor of whatever process we think we're interested in, and we're seeing whether that response is different. Eyeballing these data, it's difficult to tell whether there's any significant differences here, so we need to do some statistical analyses anyway to see whether this is a significant difference. And of course, you've got lots more data than we had in the previous section, and this would be a two-way ANOVA, because we are comparing not only the concentration response, but we're also looking and seeing if there is a, de a dependence upon the inhibitor to see if those data are changing. So we go up to the uh, set of data, and we click on the Analyze button. This way, it won't give us an option of doing a uh, column analysis. It automatically suggests a two-way ANOVA. We can't do one-way ANOVA on these data. Uh, it's just not correct. So we have to choose two-way ANOVA. We choose our two groups, and we press OK. The options we then have is, is it a repeated measures? In other words, have we used the same cells uh, to treat with and without inhibitor? No, we haven't. It's not matching. We're using a regular two-way ANOVA without repeated measures. If each column was a different time point, for instance, you took measurements over a series of times, you could do it so that time 1 was Y1A, time 2 was BY1, time 3 was CY1, etc. But we haven't done that, uh, and we certainly haven't done it so that each row represents a different time point, so that row 1 is all at one time point, row 2 is all at a different time point, and row 3 is all at a different time point. So repeated measures requires each of these time points to have been taken in the same cells or the same tissue. We don't have that either. So it's not matching, it's just repeated experiments uh, with new cells each time or new tissue each time. Um, we need to run a post-test as well, so this time we're going to run a Bonferroni, that's the the default version, the only version it offers us in this analysis. So we're going to do a Bonferroni post-test to compare the replicate means by row. Uh, so it's going to mean a row like this and then work out whether it's different from the row underneath it or the row over here. And then here we've got variable names. So this is asking us basically to, to make things a bit more understandable when it comes to the analysis. It's asking us what defines columns. So here we've got column A, column B, column C. Well, the column is the inhibitor, so we're going to type in inhibitor. And what defines the rows? Well, the row was our drug. OK, so we're comparing our drug treatment. In fact, let's just try drug treatment. And then our inhibitor. And then we're going to press OK. And this is going to do our basic analysis for us. So it's going to be doing a two-way analysis. It's first of all testing whether the drug alone had a significant effect and we look down here and it says source of variation interaction non-significant inhibitor non-significant but the drug treatment did have a significant effect and we know that because we've already carried out a one-way ANOVA on those data and we know that there is a significant effect of drug on our result but this experiment was to test whether the inhibitor has an inhibitory effect on the data that we're looking at so we scroll down to the bottom of this table and it says here, control versus inhibitor, drug treatment, 0, 50, and 100. Did the inhibitor have an effect, p-value, greater than 0 0.5, 0 0.05 in all cases? So the summary here is that our data, as our just looking at it and eyeballing it indicated, there was no significant drop in our result when we had the inhibitor on board. Um, the great thing about PRISM is it's good for doing what-if analysis. You know, we're looking at here and we're going, ah, oh, that's interesting. I'm looking at these data here and it looks like there's a massive variation in our data set. And it could be that one of our data points was massively out due to some crazy reading artifact. So I'm going to go back and look at my inhibitor data up here and scroll across and see if, see if I did make a mistake. I don't think I did. I think everything's... Um, everything's fine here. But let's just say that the assay we were doing the reading with couldn't measure above 15. So any measurement above 15 is just artifact and irrelevant. We can right click on this one here which is 18 for instance and we can exclude the value. So click on exclude. It makes it italic, makes it blue and puts a star next to it and that tells us that those numbers are no longer being used in any of the analysis or the graphing. So we go back down to our graph 
and you can see now the variation has been reduced because I've excluded one of our data points that was higher for instance I've just made this up but higher than the, the possible read that our experimental read could do and if you go back to the ANOVA experiment although there's no significance it has excluded that data point from the analyses so it's it's quite a useful tool to have where you can have a little look see and see if there are any differences um, between data sets if for instance you've got some bizarre number way off the scale that shouldn't be there you can just exclude it um, of course this is not giving you the excuse to go through your data excluding random numbers until you get significance that is certainly not what this is intended for and that would be fraudulent but certainly if you have data and you're looking at it and thinking well that's bizarre I've done nine experiments and seven of them say a number of three and one of them gives a number of fifty you can probably exclude that 50 since uh, you don't think that could be either physiologically correct or biochemically correct to have gotten that data point. So we've done our one-way ANOVA, our two-way ANOVA, sorry, and sadly there are no significant dips in any of these data sets. So what I'm going to do now is uh, finish this one and we'll start another tutorial on something different in a minute.